Today we see if a proper nutrition can be of support to people with immune deficiencies and in particular those who have contracted the HIV virus. Welcome back to my channel. I'm always Pasquale, your nutrition and lifestyle coach. I sincerely hope that you have spent some wonderful answering Christmas holidays and that you are now recovering from the enormous meals that you had. I hope that you at least followed my pre-Christmas advices. Today, as you can see from the title, we talk about a rather hot and serious topic. But as always, we try to take it too lightly too. With stress and sadness, things just tend to worsen. So let's see if appropriate nutrition can help and support people who are HIV positive the ones that contracted the HIV virus. A disclaimer here necessary, I'm neither a general practitioner nor an immunologist, but I speak from you from direct experience in terms of nutritional aspects. Having said that, it is very important that this video is for you only a guide in case you are HIV positive or a video of general knowledge in case you are uh, here just to understand this particular topic. So, we'll start. What is HIV and when it's called AIDS? I'll leave you also in the description box below two very important websites. One is AIDS map. The site is in English language, but there are a lot of numerous translations already present inside in the site in many languages. This is the biggest database I know at the moment. The other is AIDS info website. Well, HIV is a retrovirus that attacks the immune system by creating a chronic situation. If a therapy is not followed, the outcome is usually fatal in about 10 years from the contraction. If you follow an antiretroviral therapy, life expectancy is predominantly in the average of LT population, although logically there are more risk factors. The acronym HIV stands for the English of Human Immunodeficiency Virus. There are two types of virus, HIV-1, found mainly in Europe, the Americas and Central Africa. This is the most virulent strain. The HIV-2, that develops much more a moderate syndrome, and is present in West Africa and Asia. From the point of view of the virus, it acts and works in a truly impeccable way by attacking our white blood cells. This is one of the main reasons why it is hard to find a cure. HIV behaves like um, a lymphocytes predator and sees their identity. Now I'll explain briefly how the virus acts and how the current therapies work to keep the virus a virus under control. Then we move on our nutritional tips. I believe here that the explanation is necessary to understand what to do in terms of food and lifestyle in order to help our immune system. The virus attacks a particular type of immune system cell called CD4+. These lymphocytes are so-called because the CD4 protein that is present on their membrane and which is the one that which the HIV virus binds. The CD4 plus are the directors of our immune system. Their concentration is very variable based on sex and age. I call them directors of the immune system because their function is to get in contact with the pathogens and then basically take a mold of their genetic materials and then transfer, transfer this information to the center of our immune system, which are accountable to the creation of the white blood cells, which are specific to that pathogen. So without these particular lymphocytes, our body don't know to have a disease or an infection. This is the severity of the disease, there's no direct problem, but it puts our immune system in a condition of not knowing that it is, that it is sick. In fact, people used to die when the number of CD4 plus went down to zero. In that case, opportunistic diseases such as pneumonia killed the patient and their immune system wasn't even able to detect it. Nowadays, the definition of AIDS is only used when the number of CD4 plus has declined to zero and for which we are in the situation of total immunodeficiency. Thanks to modern medication, however, even the situation is reversible and you can safely return to a threshold of the levels of CD4 plus about 350 copies per milliliter, which is the safer, the safer threshold of guard of our immune system. Fortunately, nowadays, this is very rare to happen if you follow antiretroviral therapies. There are no cures, but there are vac vaccines undergoing human experimentation. And with current therapies, there are, the virus, viruses maintain uh, undetectable levels of concentration and for which is not harmful. HIV positive couples can safely conceive children in the natural way if they adhere to the therapy. Of course, here I have generalized and simplified many, many things, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the actual situation. Now, let's move to my area of expertise, nutrition. How can we help our immune system to be strong in order um, to assist the role of antiretroviral therapies? Let's see, let's divide things into points. The first two points 
will more be related to changes in your lifestyles. The following ones instead are peculiar to nutrition. I want to point out that I won't give you any advice on what to eat, but how to eat to avoid damaging or overloading our organism and the main organs. The first advice I want to give you is to do some physical activity. HIV and medicines can affect a lot on the physical and physiological state. Some medicines can reduce appetite and cause a feeling of perennial fatigue like Triumac and Redostal that have this example the side effects. This will cause increased fat mass and decreased muscle lean mass. As you can imagine, this is not an optimal situation at all. Our organism will obviously tend to weaken and put yourself at risk for heart, heart and musculoskeletal diseases. The second advice I want to give you is to minimize alcohol and smoke. Smoking in particular is related to the possibility of being at risk of uh, arteriosclerosis. Moreover, ingredients present in cigarettes such as nicotine, tar and carbon monoxide are highly irritating of the respiratory system, in addition, of course, to be at risk of development of tumors. As you understand well, the respiratory system is our first point of contact that our immune system has with pathogens. This, of course, increases the risk of opportunistic infections. The third advice I am, is to respect the warning about drug interaction with food. In fact, many drugs have some very important precaution to follow. For example, the active ingredient dulotegravir has important interaction with antacid and with multivitamins, particularly with zinc and iron. This means that excessive sources of iron and zinc must be taken hours away from the intake of the antiretroviral drugs. Another example is the absorption of some active ingredients. For example, the active ingredient duranavir must be taken on a full stomach in order to maximize the effect of the active ingredient contained. The fourth advice I want to give you is to keep a healthy liver. With this, I want you to reconnect to point two, where I said to limit the consumption of alcohol. Alcohol abuse can overburden our liver by causing the steatosis of our liver. Uh, practically, the accumulation of fat around the liver with obvious possibility of causing work overload. In addition, excessively unhealthy foods such as fast food, fries, diet poor in vegetable, vegetables and dietary fable would increase uh, all these negative factors. The fifth advice is to maintain cholesterol level at optimum levels. HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol, should keep, be kept at optimal levels through the use of in the kitchen of legumes, used of whole grain flours, possibly stone ground ones, using oil predominantly rich in unsaturated fats, like extra virgin olive oil or corn oil, for example, and avoiding as much as possible ones like coconut or palm oil. In any case, the greatest risk does not come so much from the wrong fats, even if these are unhealthy, but from the abuse of sugar-rich products. Sugar should only come from fruit or from complex carbohydrate deriving from wholemeal bread, brown rice, wholemeal pasta, vegetables, legumes. If you don't like bitter coffee, you can opt for a sweetness like stevia. I will shoot a dedicated video related to stevia in the future. Finally, I want to talk about the consumption of green tea. A study was conducted and published by the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology related to epicalocatechin 3 gallate, which is the acron acronym at AGCG. This chemical compound is an antioxidant present in tea leaves. The one in the green tea tends to oxidize lower than the one in the black one. The study showed that ACCG has a strong tendency to bind with the membrane receptor of the CD4 lymphocytes and inhibiting its binding to the HIV virus and thus preventing HIV uh, to destroy CD4 cells. The problem is that strong concentration of ECCG are needed for this to happen and at the moment it is not possible to assume too much because an excessive, an excessive concentration of ECCG can cause permanent hepatic damages. In any case, it's an interesting factor in the study of future drugs which may have the natural starting base like green tea. The link of this study as well as uh, for all the other references I gave you during this video are shown in the description box below. So, a couple of cups of green tea in a day without sugar of course are very welcome. I wanted to close this video with a personal thought. This disease has been fatal for years. Now it's turned into a chronic disease for which fortunately, if you strictly follow the therapy, it may seem you have nothing at all. Giant steps have been made and are still being done thanks to researchers and scientists who work hard day after day to develop new therapies and maybe eventually find a cure. Since they have done so much for us, it is our turn to make something for ourselves. Don't turn the effort into something evanescent. We can do that by maintaining our body in perfect health with a proper diet and a constant physical activity. We must play our part. The next video will be less challenging, luckily. 
we will talk about vitamin C. If you like this video, please leave a thumb up, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for new updates on my YouTube channels. Please follow me on Instagram and Facebook and visit my website www.helpmefood.com. Well, I'm only left to say eat well, live well and smile and see you next time. Ciao!